Welcome to Girl Talk with your host, Melissa Ann. Girl Talk is that show which discusses the real issues black women face being a mom, a dad, a wife, a girlfriend, a sister, a co-worker, a therapist, or whatever hat black women wear on any particular day. Why? Because black women are just dope. Without further ado, here is your host, Melissa Ann. Welcome to Girl Talk with your girl, Melissa Ann. We have Girl Talk tonight with the boys. We are excited to talk about our topic tonight. Oh, what is the definition of good sex? I want to hear it from the fellas. But first, before we get started... I want the fellas to introduce themselves. We're a short one crew member tonight, but we're going to roll on. On my right, we got... It's Michael out of uh, Hot Atlanta. Uh, here to spend some time with you guys tonight. Glad to be here. All right. And next on the docket... My name is Roosevelt. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank you, Roosevelt. Pleasure to see you here. That's your boy with the big guns. Hey, <laughs> oh. tonight. A.K.A. Kai Carr. A.K.A. Kai Can Cook. Coming at you live all the way from Hot Atlanta, baby. All right, and K Diddy tonight, huh? Yeah, I had to switch K. it up. K Diddy, one. I had to K. Gotta keep Diddy. them guessing. It's a different, it's a different topic tonight, so I had to change the whole name up. The name and the game, baby. The name and the game. <laughs> well, <laughs> before we get into our hot topic, which I know all the women are going to be glued to the screen listening on all of our podcast channels, whether that's Amazon, Audible. Google or Apple, they're going to all be listening to what we have to say tonight. But I think, you know, for we have we've seen a lot of things happening in current events. Um, and one one of the conversations that we were having as a group prior to having this conversation was what are the social impacts that we're seeing out there? Like, you know, gas is expensive. Roosevelt said bacon is ten dollars a package. I saw butter six bucks for um, a daggone package of non-name brand butter. Who can afford that? What do you guys think is the the what's going on? It's prophecy, man. We're in the Book of Revelations right now, I believe. Mm-hmm. I've heard several people say that, but then God say you don't know the name, the day, nor the hour. I'm not talking about the return. I'm talking about just the prophetic utterings that happened in that book about prices going up and wars and rumors of wars, you know, weather, weather, the climate change, all that stuff. It's, um, the things are changing. And the good thing, the crazy thing is we we gotta start adapting to change. The way that, uh, the way that people are moving from larger cities into smaller cities and um, things are just changing. And uh, probably the biggest thing about it is the whole entire atmosphere has gotta be adaptation. The status quo is not gonna make it anymore. Doing things no. the way you did it five years ago is not going to make it anymore. I, I agree with that, and I, I think it's I think it's terrible. Um, you know, some of the prices that have shot up so high that it's actually, um, you know, put people at a disadvantage for anywhere from gas to food. I think it's kind of crazy and housing. Um, you know, all I can say is, you know, this this didn't start with. You know, one event definitely the COVID is is probably where most of this began. But um, try to use um, these times of, of of downtime, if you will, even though it's not pleasant. Those that can work from home, um, those that are, you know, um, God forbid, but in between jobs, try to tr- try to use the time in between to pick up some new skill sets that are very relevant to um, things we need today. Yeah, that's good advice. Mm-hmm. I, I've seen a lot of people took advan- take advantage of the time and actually start some pretty successful businesses. So I think that's one thing. Um, but I heard someone say once before, and, and, and I, I really kind of believe this, whether it's physical change, whether it's growing your knowledge, um, you should be a different person than, than when COVID started. You could, on the other side of it, you, you should have gained something. And, you know, hopefully for a positive, for sure. But a lot of a lot of people, what uh, this has exposed certain things that they were able to hide prior to the pandemic. You know, we had travel, we had going out, we had all kinds of stuff that we were doing, and all that shit got taken away. 
So now you're forced to live with you. Mm -hmm. And people Mm -hmm. began to get exposed around, do I love me and can I live with myself? Damn. And a lot of people quickly found out that they couldn't live with themselves because they didn't have anything to hide behind. That's an interesting point. That's that's actually really interesting because you think think about it. I mean, divorce is up tremendously simply for the fact that the things that you're able to um, kind of sweep under the rug are now in your face. You know, some of the things that you said, hey, I don't know, this is not a big deal. When you're around it all the time, it is a big deal. And then the, mm-hmm. the good thing about it is, is just that this is an opportunity, like Mike said, this is an opportunity to change who you are to, for the better. Because usually, because people don't understand, like right now is a time where people, because um, like during the Great Recession, the, the Great Depression, when everyone, when people are jumping out of windows and everything else, there were more millionaires created at that time than any other time in America. One of the worst financial crackdowns, and um, people, some people decided, "Hey, I'm going to change the game. I'm going to, I'm going to change the way things are going. I'm going to, I'm going to disrupt this, this uh, economy. I'm going to disrupt this skill set." Um, there's so many different things that you can do to better yourself. Like, that, like there are some people who are learning how to use computers who never used computers before. Learning how to integrate their phone into their business, streamlining their business, um, learning about. Because everyone used to be used to advertise on Facebook. The way they've changed the way Facebook markets, Apple is not um, giving Facebook full access to all their Apple people. So TikTok is actually blowing up. Podcasts are blowing up. Um, Spotify is blowing up. There's so many different avenues that people are learning how to cope. Yeah. And now people are learning to work from home. It's an opportunity to grow. I said I started a podcast. I started a podcast. I started an online website. I wrote a book during the COVID. But what are some of the things that you guys have done during that time period where you kind of got closer to yourself? So let me start with this. During COVID, I had a a job change that was kind of unpredicted, but it was a blessing actually how it happened and how the transition just took place. Um, Just as one company was downsizing, I got a call a week before I found out any of this to um, start interviewing um, for a new job that has just been a total blessing altogether from the technology to the type of, for, to the um, you know, types of people and teams that I was working with. But along with that, um, you know, there were some not so good things that happened to me during that time too. You know, yeah, I went through a divorce um, and that kind of forced some change too. I kind of felt like my whole mindset caused me to do a reboot, not just on, not just on my mind, though my body too. So I started working out again. Um, I lost a total of 37 pounds. Wow. I had started an invention process uh, a a few years ago or a year year prior. I started um, with all all the different things that, that are involved with, uh, you know, taking an idea to um, bringing it to fruition, basically. So in 2020, um, I actually started patenting, started the patent process for one of my inventions that I've come up with. So a uh, few, few good things came out of it. Um, yeah, I think you guys mentioned that before in one of our episodes, the patents that you have, all good stuff. Good stuff from, you know, genius you know thinking of some of those things but not letting the pandemic get you down you did some amazing things during that any anybody else well the pandemic did you know get me down a little bit in in the beginning because the go from listen to this folks get down but not keep you down right right, let me let me hear me out because we don't i don't want to sugarcoat this to where oh we got to be we got to capitalize and change and we, we got to look at the reality of this shit in its entirety. You know, there's the change part on the other side that's great and good and the patents and everything else. But there's also shit that people go through to get to that side. And so I'm going to talk about that piece. And so that piece for me was going from three weeks out of the month I'm on the road to being at home every single day where my home was the gym. My home was the club. My home was the bar. My home was the restaurant. My home was the movie theater. All of that was taken away outdoors, and now I'm in the house doing all that. 
So that shit had an impact on me. You know, I had to get adjusted to it. Now let's talk about the other side. In that process of being by myself a lot, I quickly realized that, you know what, Kyrie, you love yourself. I love me and the man that I look at in the mirror, I love him and I actually enjoy being with him. And it got to the point to where I started enjoying the solitude as opposed to looking at it as something negative because I realized that I love myself, I love being with myself and I started enjoying being with myself. That's dope. You got some guns too. Looks like you got some guns during yeah, that I got, time. Yeah, I put on my Schmedium shirt tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I put it on. I put it on. And you know what? I put, you know I, I put it on. I was like, you know, I'm gonna roll with it. No. I'm gonna roll with see it. The, I wasn't talking about the Schmedium. I was talking about your guns for real. Your arm, your muscles. I mean, for me, it was a little bit different when COVID happened. Um, I'm self-employed, and I'm, I'm a doctor of chiropractic. So what happened was the state started had a had a curfew. So you had to be home by like three o'clock and, and no patients were coming out in the beginning. So what I did is um, I started to realize, I said, hey, I don't know how I'm going to pay my mortgage. I don't know how I'm going to eat. Wow. So what I started doing was I just started looking and doing, going into other avenues. I started working with other practices. And then more importantly, I, start, I went into real estate. I was like, um, I, had, I had a couple of houses. So in the downtime that technically I couldn't see nobody, I started studying, reading, looking up tax code for real estate, looking at different, um, doing different things. And I just started buying real estate and I bought a, quite a few properties. I started learning how to, for lack of a better term, how to game roles, all the different tax strategies that go along with it. And um, I just started buying houses and um, I, I started buying them and I, built, and I built up a nice portfolio. I mean, I bought a lot of houses during the pandemic. And the good thing about it was um, people weren't sure what they were doing. Some people just wanted to leave their house and um, some people were panicking and just selling their houses, which was fine because I was buying. So I bought all the houses. Um, I figured out how to buy houses, you know, with, with little to mo- no money down. And then before you know it, I, I, had a, I had a sizable portfolio. And then I started putting renters in and then I started to relax because I started to get passive income. And once I was able to do that, I could ride out COVID because my mortgage was paid, my bills were paid, and I was good. And then when my practice started to come back, I was still good because I was still getting my passive income. But for a couple, for a couple of months, during when, when March, when that April period came around, um, I was a little nervous because mm-hmm. I didn't have a check coming in. Um, you know, I couldn't see nobody, so I wasn't gonna be able to make an income. So mm-hmm. I was just on the sidelines waiting to get in. Yeah, see, that's the shit people need to hear though. They we don't yeah. I don't we don't need to just hear oh I, I built a you know a real estate portfolio and everything was shiny and bright. No, at first you were like shit. I don't know if I'm be able to. The funny thing about it, the funny thing about it is, is like a lot of times you don't like you don't even know what you're doing. And then I'm saying so I said hey I started watching the YouTube videos. I went and ordered some books off Amazon. I read it. I went and got. I went and got the tax code book for real estate. Survival of the fittest. And I started reading. I started looking at that stuff. And I was like okay mm-hmm. boom. I start buying house, buying house, buying house, buying house, and then before you know it, and the houses were cheap. I mean, not. What's anymore. the name of the book? Dummies for real estate. Something like that. It was something. It was something like that. I didn't know that existed. That's what I was. I, was, I mean, I mean I'm, being, I'm being a little facetious. But yeah, they got a book. They got a book for dummies for everything. Yeah, right but the thing is, though, I probably I probably read like eight or nine books <laughs> about taxes, real estate, doing this, doing that, um, doing the math of it, looking at the properties, evaluating amount, you know. But like a lot of times, like uh, like uh, Mike, Mike Mike said, we got to make ourselves better. I mean, there's a lot of times. I mean, I forgot a lot of math, but when I started doing all the real estate and looking at the numbers and doing comps, I started doing the mathematics of it, and I was like, you know what? I can do this. When you're for when your back's against the wall, and you're like, hey, you got you got two options: eat or not eat. And um, I'm a big guy, so I like to eat. And I think a, another good part is like you don't keep that information to yourself. It's more when we talk about lift as you climb, you're willing to teach other people how to do it. So mm-hmm. um, hats off to you for that, for just, you know, telling people this is how I did it. And like Kai said, you know, it wasn't all rosy for any of us. I think for me, I was consistently in therapy. Um, so it wasn't as bad mentally for me, but there were times, obviously. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I'm, I'm a homebody and Kai knows this too, but you know, I, I'm not the person that goes out anyway. Mm-hmm. But even for me, I was like, okay, now 
I want to go somewhere. But, you know, I think it's been a struggle for all of us. So I thank all of you for sharing your stories. But let's get to the topic at hand here. <laughs> Who going to sing it with me? Hot sex. Hot, hot sex. sex. Of, hot sex hot on sex a platform. Hot sex. <laughs> 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 ah, all right so let me tee it up let me tee it up so i have you know obviously women have conversations but i've always heard for years where women are saying you know they have the good good and that's why this man stays or this is why he keeps coming back i don't necessarily buy into that but i always wanted to understand from a, a male perspective is that true what what is the definition of good sex um everyone always thinks every woman thinks that their stuff is the best but the reality of it is it has nothing i'm going to be a, i'm going to give a grown man answer it's about the connection you have before you have sex because a lot of times if, mm -hmm. if a girl has got she's got a she's got a positive energy she's got a good attitude um she speaks well you converse you connect with her on a personal level that's what makes the sex good i mean she can be i mean she could do all the backflips and all that other stuff if you're not feeling her like that it really doesn't matter well there it is who else feel like that no i, I agree with that I, I i think that the connection does make it you know put it to another level as men of course we are more um visual than 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 females are i'll say what would make it good for me there is the the the, the excitement makes it a little a little a little softer down there so i'll say that for sure um but oh, well, well, um, well, 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 make what softer i go on alexa listen alexa wanted to know too kai right. said what makes it alexa was like what yeah, what's right. soft? What do, you mean, what's soft? What, what do you mean what's soft down there juicy juicy let's use the word oh juice are you talking about the juice okay mm -hmm. I thought you talked about so, Mr. Johnson. So what about like, you know, if someone brings excitement, are you more apt to come back? Like whips and chains and whipped cream and cough drops. Well, I mean, I, thought, I, you know, I mean, you're going to come back for that. You know, lot. You know whoever, whoever, you know, whatever you're into, but you definitely don't want somebody who just lays there. The partic participation, <laughs> you want that. <laughs> <laughs> But you do. You you want somebody who is, isn't just like right this. Just like this. <laughs> right, right, right. But counting the popcorn. Are you done yet? You, Michael, are you done yet, Michael? Come on. Here we are. <laughs> nine o'clock. Shit. <laughs> Not nine o'clock. Shit. <laughs> Michael, hurry up. My popcorn's almost done. <laughs> right, the right. Clowns. Go ahead, Michael. Go ahead. Oh, Don't let them distract you from your answer. Right. Go ahead. No, but, you know, that's that's it. I don't know. They, you know, all that chemistry, that, that all plays a part. And as far as um, women thinking that, you know, a man isn't going to go anywhere just because they think that it's, it's that good, you know, it's going to be more. It, it takes more than that. If you, if you don't have a bigger connection than that, there's got to be a level of respect for a man to really continue to seek out um, that woman. There's there's obviously something something else there. So if the sex isn't, um, if it's boring, like you said, the person just lays there and, and um, they don't, you and you don't come back. Like women are not as kind, I don't think. In some women's mind, if you're not able to perform, they're not necessarily coming back. Yeah, I, I don't think Mike was saying that they can, as long as you have a connection, they can just lay there. I, I, I you know, for me, I, I, and I believe, and I know Mike, we've been friends for 30 years, and I, Roosevelt too, you know, that it's, it's a total package. It, it, it's a package deal. But listen, cause we, we, these brothers giving grown man answers right now. You know, <laughs> and, you know, you know I'm 50, I'm 50, Roosevelt 50, Mike 47, 48, they giving those years. But I remember the days where me and my boys would get up and we'd be like, yo, what are we doing today? We going girl hunting. <laughs> That's what we called it in New York. We going girl hunting. Back in high school, you know, growing up and shit. Yeah, you know, you you wanted that. You yo yo, did you did you, did you get it? Hell yeah, right. I got it. How how was it? And then you right. went on to talk but about what it. What is that? How was it? Okay. Well, you, we know what? But you know what? You know what? If you want to get down and dirty, we used to call it sport fucking. And what happened was, you go out there, you meet them, 
and you just see how freaky they get. And the freakier they got, the better it was. You know, and you just, gotcha. I mean, you, you just be getting in there, just getting it. And after a so while, so that's what you mean when you're asking how what when your boys are asking you how was it? How freaky she got? Because because she was if she she's down to do all this stuff. Guess what happened? One of your boys would be like thinking, man, she's all she all about that. Because that's how that's how guys sleep with another the same guy's friend girlfriend. Well, those those are them grimy dudes. But that's man. but for women that is a that you that's girl code. You don't do that. Oh no! Well, hold on! Hold on! Hold on! No, no, I heard. No, I heard, no, I heard, I heard <laughs> yes, well, it is. Yeah, I, I agree with Doc on that. That that may be a, a spoken code, but that's not. They don't always just act on that. I, no, that's I, not real. But but men don't either. And I, I want to say, I, w- I do want to address that. I think that is a, a spoken code against, uh, not against, but with everyone that you know, with someone you definitely are really interested in, you don't go in you know great detail on that part of your connection or relationship with that because people will be curious about what it's like with them. And I don't, I don't think that's specific to a man or a woman, but I know plenty of women who would get down with the get down. You know, it doesn't, it, that doesn't really matter. Yeah. yeah depending on the relationship with the woman, yeah. you know, you're not going to talk about that woman like that anyway with your boys. Right. That's right. You know, you might, you might say something like, Oh yeah, you know, we, we played around. We had a good time last night, but you're not going to get in the mm-hmm. detail. If you feeling that woman, uh, a, a, a real man won't do that shit because there's, there's a level of respect that you have for that woman that you wouldn't put her out there like that to your boys. Yeah. I mean, if you're cool with your friends like that, I mean, I have some friends from high school I played ball with. I mean, we were real tight. It was just unspoken. If, he, if this guy dated this girl, the rest of no one, no, no one else touched her. Even if they had the worst breakup in the free world, no one else touched her. It's just, you know, you just don't play in that sandbox. There's so many other sandboxes to play in. You go play in that one. You just don't go right. You don't. You don't go in after your boy. It just if you're cool like that, and I don't care how how great it is. It's just that no one ever does that. I mean, none of my friends have done that. Well, you said it was a wasn't a code just then, just a few seconds ago. I know, but some girls, some girls. I mean, they just. I mean. They, so you're saying there's no code for women, but there is a code for men. No, not a code That's for a men. Lie. No, I'm just saying for like like if you if you're cool with your friends, if you like you like 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 our group. No one would ever date any of the girls that someone dated. It's just, I'm not saying with all guys. I'm saying with the guys I know. The guys I'm but friends with. But that's what I was talking about. Because when you, when you, first, dis- when you first talked about it, you said, um, Mike, you gave the example of Mike, but not Mike. You know, saying, hey, you should try her too. But you're friends, right? No, you see, there, there's different levels of friends. There's different levels of friends. I mean, I played football in high school and I played football in college. Now, there's a group of guys you're cool with. That's your group. Now, there's other guys you're friends with on the team. That's a larger periphery. Those guys, those guys might do it, but the guy, the five or six guys that I was really cool with, they would never do that. So you got your close group of friends, and you got your periphery of your friends, and that's just that's just the fact what it is. We have a close group. No one in our close group would do that, but some of the dudes in the periphery, they would. Oh, I, that I agree with. And as for for women, yeah, if they're not close to you. It's, it's open season. Yeah, yeah but, 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 you, think, but you, still, a, you still know the guy. You can still know the guy. We still haven't even defined what is good sex. Yeah, go ahead and define it. Because you can, you, can, you, can, you can have a connection with somebody and the sex not be good. So what does it mean to have good sex? Why don't you tell us then? I'm about to tell you. I'm about to tell you. Spit it. You got, you got to be, you got, look, you got to be open-minded. You, have you, got, you got you got to know how to ride it. You got to ride that thing like a damn mechanical bull. You got to be interested in it. Some some women don't even have a a drive. I mean, your your drive got to match my drive. Your freaky got to match my freaky. Y'all get sugar coated ass questions to begin with, and now y'all getting into the details at the end. So what is it that defines it? My my whole thing is when you see Mister Happy, don't act like don't act like he's a, like, like you've never seen him before. Should women be aggressive and like when you come through the door? Yeah, yeah, I think that's important. That shit's important, man. Yeah, that shit's important. I mean, try shit, do shit without me having to ask you. Yeah, yeah. You know, do shit like without or and ask. What you want me to do tonight for you, baby? Yeah, and it it, it, it goes both ways. If if I'm throwing it, I need you to be throwing it back. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like Mike said, I don't want to be doing all the work. I need you to be participate. It's and and be like, effort. be like, uh, uh-uh, uh, you know what? Turn over. I'm getting on top. Mm-hmm. So that my, makes you come back. 
it's my turn. Well, I'm not saying it's gonna make me come back. <laughs> I'm not saying it's gonna make me come back now, but I'm just saying. Like I'm spit out his drink. <laughs> <laughs> original question. No, we're, we're, we're defining we're defining what is what is good sex, right? But it doesn't mean it's gonna make you come back. <laughs> you know what I mean? Be be willing to try, um, you know, some new things and shoot, bring bring your excitement. You know, I think I do think the connection comes along with that, but bring that in, you know. So if they bring a bottle and a trench coat, that excite that's excitement. Yes. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. You sure I'm not gonna think boom 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 <laughs> boom boom boom. You know what that, that you know what believe it or not. There's, there's someone hold on, Doc. There's someone at your front door. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? That, 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 that actually is kind of hot. That is that is hot. That is. You, you come you come come to my house with trench coat on. We, we're gonna get it in in the garage. I mean, you, get, you, you come in, you come in with your heels, your trench coat. We're ready to roll. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And a bottle, right? You don't need no bottle. You don't need no bottle. You the bottle. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Pop by the pop bottles tonight, baby. <laughs> so let me ask you this, Melissa. Can I ask you a question? Sure. As the, uh, as the first girl as talk a, with the boys. As, yes, as the first, as the, as the first lady of the show. A girl talk with the boys is our right, show. So, so I've heard women say that you know they do that, like the you know if the if the if the if the Johnson is good, they'll they'll get pistol whipped, and you know what I mean by pistol whipped. Yeah, it's true. Okay, and so the relation the, the dude can be a jerk, asshole, ass white. Yes. But as long as he pistol whipping you, you good. Yes. Damn. Why is that, though? I don't... I don't know. Because it rings your bell. I, yeah, I mean, it's... You it can was ring good. my bell. I mean, probably ring for the same reasons that you said, like the excitement of it. Just getting that spot. Yeah. Getting that spot. You know, I, I can imagine that happens for men, too. Like crack. I hope my, I hope my kids ain't listening to this. Like, daddy, it's, daddy, no! It's on the internet. <laughs> yeah, I know. They're going to hear it. Daddy, no! Yeah, I can see that. I can see that happening for men, too. Yeah. Where it's like, man, this... Oh, my God. She get on my damn nerves, but oh, my God. Right. That's Hello? what I was saying. Like, You free tonight? <laughs> <laughs> I'll be all around, Mike. Mike, I can't stand her. Hello, you see tonight? <laughs> I got two phones. <laughs> I mean, oh, like man. I said, if she comes, you know, one night in a trench coat, one night in a t-shirt, mm-hmm. you know, or she brings some feathers and whips and chains and handcuffs. She can even bring her friends. You're going to want that. You're going to want all of that excitement over and over and over again. <laughs> You said she could bring what? <laughs> she could even bring her friend. <laughs> oh, and on that note, hey, but there will probably be there, there will probably be something in your audience that would be like, "Yep, they down with that too." Right? Yeah, yeah man, probably. Like, yeah. Times have changed. Me and one yeah, of my yeah, boys are talking own. about this. Yeah, because guys um, don't want to do two women at once. Because we're all men of character, and I'll leave it at that. Good. You do leave it at that. <laughs> yeah, because that, that's, that's, that's not every guy's dream. I don't know, but I would think when you were younger, right? Yeah, when you were younger, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. the younger Cause, men are thinking that way. Because no, young, because no older guy thinks like that. Man, yeah, younger men do though. Well, he's being facetious, Melissa. Oh, older men do too. Every guy. Hell thinks yeah, that. men think about everything. Shoot. How, how, how graphic do you want to get on this show? Because I can say some shit. Yeah, I mean, because if, if you want. Our time is up, sir. If you want. If you want, we can make this X-rated. Because I'm telling you right now. No. There, there, there's a lot I, of things that guys do. I mean, shoot. No guy no guy ever says no to a woman. There's no guy ever says, you know what? I don't feel like having sex with you. Even if you don't like her, he's still going to sleep with her. Why? Because you can't Who's turn saying, her on. Mm, Mike? Or Kai. Kai. <laughs> that would be me. That would, that, that, that would be me. You could be mad at her. You could be broke up with her. But she gives you sex. You're like thinking, Mm-mm. I'll stay in another week. Nah. 
Man, I've been mad. I've been so fed up where I don't even want to look at you. I've, I've been that. Well, l- let me say a couple of things. Um, turning down uh, sex from just anybody is one thing. Turning down mm-hmm. sex from someone you actually have a history with is another thing. So um, if, if you know, I meet a woman that's throwing it at me that I'm just not feeling her like that, and, yeah, I, I'll, I'll turn it down, and I have. And there'll be Me too. Also women that, you know, I have history with. We do have a strong or did have rather have a strong history of uh, a strong um, physical um, connection. We had lots of chemistry and mm-hmm. yeah, you still you still be at it. But eventually, whatever about this woman had pissed you off so bad that you don't want anything to you know, do with her um, physically, you know, that that can <laughs> That could eventually live, you know, lead to you guys breaking up and never dealing with each other again. I, I, I definitely had one. One woman comes to mind right now. Her, her ass was crazy as shit. So, you know, but it was good. It was good while we were together. But she quickly and often said some things or did some things that just really made me like sick and tired of her. So. So okay, got it. But here's a question most women ask. And I want to know if if you guys like this question. How many women have you slept with? Uh, no. Uh, I, I, the number I, you have the num- the number you have reached <laughs> has been disconnected. You know what? <laughs> uh, I think I'll, video I'll, too. Are you serious? You know what? You know what? I'll, 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 I'll take a, I'll, I'll take a quote from my man Rick Ross. I don't I don't make love I don't I don't make love I make magic. So the ones who I'm, I'm, I'll talk about the ones I made magic with. How about that? That ain't answering the question. That means you straight up lying. Yeah, that, that don't even make sense. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give up my body count. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's self-incrimination right there, right? <laughs> now, listen, man, listen, Charlie. Man, I thought this was good. This is going to be girl. This will be the last episode of Girl Talk with the Boys. Right, 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 Let's right, just right. be Girl Talk with Melissa Ann. <laughs> this episode. <laughs> come on, come on, like I'm Jack the Ripper. Make me sound like I'm Jack the Ripper. Right. Mm-hmm. Roosevelt Dexter Smith. Yeah. <laughs> Dexter so, St. John. Okay, before we close out, I want any parting words for the women out there that just think they're awesome and the men are never going to leave or they're going to continue to come back. Or advice to women how to satisfy and keep a man. I at least said uh, answer one of them. The ones that think it's so good that ain't nobody gonna leave. There's always some better. I promise you that. That's <laughs> not what Roosevelt said. Roosevelt said it's all the same. You hear that, folks? He said, "I promise you that." <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mike got a sliding scale. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, it was kind of in the mic. I mean, in the camera, like. I promise you that. Like 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 an Amazon scorecard. She got four stars, three stars. I gotta take a star back because this one's better than that one. It's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a great answer right there, bro. That was like shut up for the fight. Boom. I guarantee you, there's better. <laughs> Man, you think you're killing oh, it? Mike. There's someone that's gonna kill it even more. <laughs> but that's not what Roosevelt said. He said it was all the same. Like I, like I said, going back to the connection, that that that's what's good for me when it when you both feeling it. I mean, there there's that you can get that wild good stuff, but it's it's good to have that wild good stuff with someone you actually connect with. Connected with, with. yeah. yeah. So, but the advice I would give, Melissa, is, you know, women, you better look at the age group you're dealing with and the yeah, maturity, and the age group you're dealing with and the maturity level. Because now we're starting yeah. to see the 20-year-olds and the 30-year-olds are dating the 50 and it's vice versa. So, mm-hmm. you know, that's, you know, the, the, what was that song? Age ain't nothing but a number? Mm-hmm. It's more than a number, baby. Roosevelt, what you got to say? What's your last word? You know, I don't agree with Mike and the rest of the crew. Your connection is important, you know. That is probably the biggest thing. Because if you just, if the guy's in there just for sex, sooner or later he's gonna get tired of the sex. 
Oh, sure. that's good. That's a bomb right there. We're yeah, going to end on that. That was that. some good stuff. Connection. Mm-hmm. Make sure you're connected to the right person. Make sure you're interesting. Make sure you got a brain. You can have conversation. That makes for for the full package. So don't believe the hype. It's been a pleasure talking to you as always. But thanks for joining us and thanks for listening in. And as always, I see you because I am you. You have just listened to the Girl Talk podcast with your host, Melissa Ann. Subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, Spotify, or Google Play. Until next time, remember, I see you because I am you.